Chris. I'm really excited to catch up with you here at DTW. I know you've been in a lot of meetings, been on the stage a number of times. Uh, maybe to start, help me understand where we are as an industry with network automation today. Yeah, so we have been working very closely with the telcos and the, you know, the funny part is that we started our, you know, a lot of our great autonomy work, not even in this industry, but actually in the automotive industry, right? Uh, working on the autonomous cars, but a lot of what we learn in that space it has a lot of great parallels to where we're at and kind of level five, you know, going through the five levels of autonomy. Uh, you know, most telcos, I think if you ask, they're probably in this, you know, one and a half to two and a half range on the, on the scale from, you know, one to five around what they're doing, you know, from an autonomous perspective today. But it, it also comes down to there's different, different parts are more automated than others, right? Uh, so there might be some things that might even be level three or level four. There might be some things that are, you know, 0.5, right? Uh, but, you know, the exciting thing about what we're seeing is that just year over year, the amount of interest and the progress is being made around moving down that path and really charting the path to, toward fully autonomous networks, uh, that's been, uh, that's blown me away, candidly, uh, you know, because, you know, when we we do surveys every year of kind of the big trends in telco, and, uh, you know, it was it started off and it was about applying, you know, applying it to care, you know, and applying it to employee productivity, and, and the network was, was a more of a future, you know, focus, but in the last year, the network's come square to being one of the key places where telcos are wanting to apply AI and generative AI to make transformational moves to full, to, and, and to really unlock this potential of getting to full autonomy. So, so I'd say that you know, I was you know at this show. I mean, we I think there was you know 30 different talks on on autonomous networks here, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and um, and just the ecosystem also leaning in to build these applications. I think we've announced you know probably seven or eight different partners uh, just in the last few months that have built applications specifically for network autonomy from from Accenture and TechM, you know, and uh, Amdocs and TCS and Infosys and all, and you know, so there's just a great interest now, of, and, and the telcos are saying, bring me something real too. They, there is, they want to see no more. <laughs> we don't want to see PowerPoints anymore. We actually want to see real working things that we can put in and, and see immediate impact. And that's, I think, we're seeing now that that's these things are actually moving at a very quick pace. So to that point, I mean, what are some of the standout use cases that are delivering real value today? So across all of AI uh, being applied in telco, again, I think that we're seeing massive use of AI around helping from a coding perspective and uh, driving that great efficiency there. Um, we are seeing it be used quite a bit you know, in, in the care space as well as far as scale deployments. Um, you know, some really amazing statistics that we're seeing uh, you know, on you know, the, the ability to reduce call handling time as well as improve mean time to repair uh, on, both, on both kind of billing inquiries as well as uh, on trouble ticket uh, inquiries and needing to escalate through a system. Um, and then on the network itself, we're seeing everything from network configuration, uh, so being able to, to do design, uh, you know, in a, in a much more automated way, um, and do run out different scenarios to be able to say, uh, okay, I've got, I, I mean, I have a big event coming up. I want to run out, you know, three or four scenarios about how I could plan this out, and what are the different, you know, trade-offs I would potentially have, you know, on my network around that. Um, Actually, also seeing a lot of use in just technician support. I mean, you know, so uh, you know, technicians in the field, they want to, they need, they're, they're going to want to be able to fix an issue, uh, and their ability to kind of ask, you know, a, a network expert, uh, you know, on what they need to do, and you know, potentially even taking a picture of it and saying, show me what to do. Uh, these are things that we're beginning to see really being to take hold across telcos. So as operators kind of move up that network automation maturity index that you referenced. Do you feel like they're also starting to trust more in the AI tooling that they're investing in that'll you know get them from kind of human in the loop to a much more closed loop system? Absolutely. I mean, it's a journey, right? I mean, and and so the network is the most precious asset. Uh, and there's serious issues if the network goes down and, or, or something goes wrong. And so so you have to be very confident, 100% confident, you know, that when you're doing this, you tested it and you know what's going to come out of it. And so I think you know. As we build more and more capabilities, and as they use it more and more, they are gaining confidence. Okay, um, you know, and I. Th but I do also think it's a just 
are we, we're still, I think we're still in that age of you know, human in the loop, uh, but really accelerating the ability to, to do planning, to do you know, troubleshooting, to get to that answer much more quickly is driving huge efficiencies. And then I think that there will be things that you know, are going to be unlocked to become fully autonomous over the course of time. And it's no different than you know, what we see in the car space on that front. So let's talk a little bit about the radio access network. Yep. Um, you know, AI RAN Alliance, obviously, uh, really putting the message out there and making the case, but just lay it out. What is the case for GPU accelerated compute distributed throughout a radio network? So really, as you know, these telco networks are, they've been purpose built, uh, but to do the one thing that they do really well, but it also means they're designed um, for the peak, right? They're designed for the peak hour. And you know it means they're massively underutilized at, at you know several t several hours a day, potentially weekends, and that's very different than a cloud, right? A cloud puts compute out there, and it's all about driving maximum utilization. So we want to figure out a way of how can we you know get to a more cloud-like economics you know for the telco by fully utilizing that asset. And so one of the pieces of AI and RAN is is the ability to run you know the network on the same infrastructure that you can run AI or generative AI on top of that. And when you don't need it for the network, you can deploy that to be able to drive value uh, or drive benefit you know, in other ways. And so, so that's one big piece of this, is how can we you know, really sweat that <laughs> compute investment uh, and get the maximum return on that investment. You know, along with that is you know, how do you apply AI into the network itself? And this has begun to take off in a big way this year. I think we had 10 different demos at Mobile World Con Congress of companies that are looking at applying AI to the performance of the network itself, seeing some incredible results around spectral efficiency. Like this is a big deal, right? People are buying spectrum. If you can get 30% more spectral efficiency by applying AI algorithms to the way that that's being deployed, that's a big deal, right? And so, so spectral efficiency, energy efficiency, you know, better, you know, better mean time to repair. These are these are all things that you know. How do we make the network itself? perform better. And then I think the final piece that we look at in AI RAN is, is also then all the different applications that are going to come on top. All these AI applications are going to be riding over the top of the network and how do we optimally deliver all those applications that are going to require you know different types of um, experiences, right? Uh, and so you know we're moving out of this world of uh, you know models being trained to now large scale inferencing, uh, and you know and what's the right architecture you know to be able to support all this inferencing traffic that's going to happen over the course of time. This all play, so these three elements kind of all play together in AI RAN. But we you know we but the there's some very heavy compute loads that exist in the RAN, and 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 so we we've been working hard. This probably almost seven seven and a half years. I think we've been working to, to really enable you know the radio access network to be able to work on top of a, of a GPU foundation. And we started at layer one, but now we're moving up to all the different layers and getting to some really exciting numbers and seeing some actual deployments uh, out there. That's giving a lot a lot of confidence that uh, this is the right path for the future. One last one, Chris. Um, sovereign cloud, sovereign AI. I know these are distinct things, but certainly complementary. Uh, you all had a number of announcements around GCC Paris last week, but um, just help me understand, as a communication service provider that operates in a specific geography, why they're so well positioned to capitalize on that. Yeah, it, it's been amazing what we've seen happen on this. And, and I think telcos are in a great place for you know, several reasons. One, um, they, oftentimes have access to space and power, right? And, and, and space and power, you need that first and foremost to build up the sovereign AI infrastructure. Um, the second thing is they've got very trusted relationships with the government. Some telcos are partially owned, even fully owned by the government. And if they're not, they at least have a, they're a trusted infrastructure provider in their country today and work with the government on very important things. And so, so they're in a very good position from that perspective. They also have got massive business uh, bases uh, as well as massive consumer bases, right? So, so they've got, and they know how to do things at scale. They, they also know how to do it securely. Um, and, and so these are all factors, and candidly, who, you know, telcos oftentimes, I mean, there's dedicated telcos for every nation, many of them, you know, oftentimes, but they are, they are the champions of industry in their country, right? So when you check the boxes of what, what does it mean to be truly sovereign, there's a lot of reasons why to believe the telcos, you know, are in a, an amazing spot to be that champion. And, and you know, and most of, many nations around the world, you know, have already set out an agenda to say, this is what we want to participate in this, 
but we, we need to actually, they're not going to go out and do it all on their own. They need partners to actually go out and physically build this infrastructure and to operate it and run it. And so this is, we're now, we announced, I believe, Aranj uh, came on this past week uh, as a new NVIDIA Cloud partner. We also announced uh, STC uh, came on as a new one. Uh, but we've got now, I think we're over 20 telcos around the world that are working with NVIDIA to bring that infrastructure into their country to, to also help drive the economic you know, conditions in that country, drive jobs, drive upskilling, you know, and make sure that those countries are participating in this big wave. And then, so we're, we're very excited about what it is, and we see this as being an amazing opportunity for Telcos. Well, you guys have a lot of really interesting, innovative stuff going on. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to catch up and take us through it. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.